Hello everyone. In this video we're going to look at running Angular unit tests using code build. So let's get to it. So I'm back in the code and I'm currently looking at buildspec.yaml but before I make changes here I want us to get an understanding of how unit tests are run in Angular. This is important because we need to understand how to set up the Angular project to get it working in code build. So the first thing I'm going to do is just run an ng test, just so you can see what happens. So what you will see is you'll see a new browser window open up, and you'll see something called Karma being ran, and you can see the version of Chrome that I'm using. And for each test, you can actually click on it and see what the output is for each test. So if I come down to feature one, go should create. So you're going to show the result of feature one. If I click feature two should create, you'll see only the output for feature two. And if I click app component, well, you pretty much see everything, okay? So that's basically what uh, Angular tests look like in terms of using the Karma system. Obviously, there's a problem with this, with our code build instances, and that is that code build runs using containers. So if we're trying to run these tests inside of a container, we can't use the UI of Chrome to do that for us. So what we're gonna look at right now is how to install a version of Chrome known as Chrome Headless that will run the test for us without needing a UI. So how we do that, let's take a look. So I'm back in the code and I'm now looking at my angular.json file. And this is basically the project file that you have in Angular 6. And what I'm more focused on here is basically this test section down under artifact for our AWS Angular app, okay? So the thing of interest here is how we can configure Karma. So how to do that, you can see here is the source karma.conf.js. So if you're ever trying to work out which Karma configuration file to change, it's the one listed in this file, okay? So I've got already got it open. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create something called a custom launcher. Now this will just launch Chrome, but it's going to launch Chrome with a number of flags. And those flags, uh, basically to make it so that it doesn't generate a UI. So I've already kind of already jumped ahead and I'm just gonna copy and paste this custom launches section. And you can see here, it has custom launches and then inside of it we have something called Chrome Headless. This can be named whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. As long as the base is set to, in this case it should be Chrome, like so. So save that. And then the flags, are no sandbox, headless, disable GPU and this remote debugging port if you really need it, right? And down here, we can see the browser set by default here is Chrome. We need it to be Chrome headless. Now I could come down here and set this to Chrome headless. However, that means it will always run in this mode, which is not what we want. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna update my ng test command so that it runs using this browser instead of this one set by default down here. So to do that, I come over to package.json and I already have a test here, which I still wanna keep for my local development, but I'm gonna create a new one. I'm gonna go to test CI, similar to the build CI. And what I'm gonna do here is go ng test like we had before and I'm gonna exit that with a comma so we get rid of the error. And I'm gonna use this browsers flag, and this is gonna be set to Chrome headless, like so. Now I just wanna make sure that I've got the name of this correctly. So if I come back, hopefully it's the same name that's here. In fact, I might just copy this and make sure I paste it correctly. Yep, all good. Now the other thing I need to do is I need to stop the Karma environment from watching any changes to my code, right? Because I'm inside of a container, I'm not gonna be watching any code, 
I just wanted to execute the test and exit. That is it. So to do that, I now need to use another command. I think it's dash dash no watch. I think that's the actual command here. I'm just double checking this. And I think that's correct. Let's just give it a run and see if it works. So I'm going to come down. I'm now going to type ng, uh, sorry, npm run test colon ci and see if this works. And now, as you can see, all the tests have passed using this new headless Chrome browser. All right, so that's all good. We'll get a test running without requiring a UI. However, we haven't configured this yet for our code build instance. So we need to do that now using the buildspec.yaml. So I'm gonna now close all these files because we don't need them anymore. We know all about them. And I'm gonna come over to my buildspec.yaml. Now the first command I'm going to add is the actual test CI command. And I'm gonna run that after we run the build. However, the other thing we need to do is we need to get uh, basically Google Chrome into this container and basically we need to install that. So I'm going to come up now and I'm create a st install phase, right, like so. I'm going to go commands and then I'm going to just paste in a whole bunch of stuff here. So basically what we're doing here is we're getting a whole list of dependencies that we need in order to run Chrome inside of our container. So this first command is basically updating the package manager inside of the container so that it has or knows about the latest version of each package that we need to install. So that's the first command. The second command is actually installing all dependencies that we need to run Google Chrome. Uh, I'm not going to go into what apt-get is. That's a Linux thing. If you want to look it up, that's for you to worry about. But that's not the point of this video. Next command is it's basically pulling down the DB file that we need to uh, install. And so we're downloading that. And then we're running this, this dpackage command, which again is another Linux command, to install the download a Google Chrome DB file and register that in our container. Once we've done all that, we've essentially installed Chrome on our machine, okay, or on our container, I should say. Then everything else should work, okay? So if I now save this, and I go and I update all this in Git, we'll go back to code build and see what happens. So I'm back in code build, and I ran another build, and as you can see, it succeeded. Obviously, the duration is a lot longer now because we're doing a lot more stuff. So you can see it took, you know, 205 seconds, so nearly four minutes to run. But if I come inside of it now, we're going to see a whole bunch of more stuff in the logs. Before I go to the logs, so let's click on phase details. And if we come down to the install part, you're going to see the install part is what took up most of the work here. So 104 seconds, essentially half the build time, was involved in installing those packages. All right, and then another 32 seconds to do the pre-build, and then in 44 seconds to do the actual build, which includes running the unit tests. So I'm gonna come back over to the build logs, and we're gonna scroll down a bit. Obviously there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. But we can see it's entering the phase install and it's now running the app get update. So the output of that command is directly underneath this. So this is all a bunch of stuff where it's trying to get new packages, right? So when we see the get here, we're actually getting it. So it's actually downloading it and updating it. You can see the file sizes on some of these things. So it might take a bit of time to download. So that can add to your load time. Coming down, we're now installing the packages. So these were just understanding what packages were out there. This is actually installing the packages. So we've got a whole bunch of 
packages that we wrote in our commands. So it's grabbing all those. A lot of them have dependencies themselves. So it shows all those. It's grabbing suggested packages, you know, and a whole bunch of other stuff is going on here. You can see it's getting a whole bunch of stuff. This is all Ubuntu stuff. Just understand that it, it's just it's grabbing packages to install and installing them. And this goes on for a while. So if I keep scrolling down, 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 you keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. You can see there's a lot of stuff going on here when we install. But we need it in order to have Chrome. So now we're installing Chrome here. We're running the, the packet, D package on Google Chrome. And that sets up Google Chrome. And then basically, once we've done all that, we have the install phase completed and it's working. Then we enter the pre-build phase. This is where it's running the NPM install. That's when it's doing the NPM, getting all the packages. We know about all the stuff already. Coming down, we got the build. So the first command is to actually do the build. So you can see the output of the build. We've seen that before. Then we've got the test command that we just wrote. And you can see the output of that. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here, but we can see executing one of five, one of five success here, you know, down to five of five. And then basically that completes, then post build and so on and so forth, where it's grabbing the artifacts and uploading the artifacts. So that's pretty much everything we need to do in order to run unit testing our code build. So we've successfully done that now. In the next video, we're going to finish off this code build project by taking the output of our builds and instead of creating an artifact, right, and using that, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to use the AWS CLI, which is built into the container, and I'm going to move the files off the container directly into our S3 website bucket. So I'll see you in the next video.